Hello everybody and welcome along to another edition of the uh, Rebel White Ball. And I suppose we've got to start with uh, the Rebel success story in terms of championship wins. And at this stage I think we are at, what is it, 38 wins out of our 42 outings in 33 days. And um, it's an incredible, you know, achievement when you, when, you, when you think of it like that. And of course last night's victory uh, by the minor, both minor teams, uh, the ladies. Uh, travelled to Tralee and uh, had a six point victory over Kerry in the Munster Championship. I think that's probably semi final stage. Whereas the uh, lads team, they got a real fright against Limerick in the Munster final. Limerick, in, remember Limerick have only won one minor football championship. And that was back uh, 65 years ago. And they led last night, I think, coming into the top water break. And my God, is. I would imagine that this Limerick minor football team, you know, as it performed heroically. Um, they got 13 points and they laid Cork. But uh, in fairness to Cork, uh, found their mojo, if you wish, in the last quarter and, um, you know, scored seven or eight points maybe without reply. Uh, Hugh O'Connor from uh, the Newmarket Club, I think it is. He was man of the match, scoring 1 7 and maybe 1 5 of those from, from play. So, yeah, all Cork team does it. Of all genders and board codes absolutely uh, uh, flying and you, you may remember the minor hurlings on Monday night Raven over Waterford where uh, Darrell Sullivan from Van Hesse was the man of the match in um, in that particular in that particular game and I think what it has meant that it's the first time since 2005 that you know Cork have won the Grand Slam if you like of under age events you know it was back in it was under 21 back then in 2005 but you know the under 21 hurling and uh, football double. Um, I was just thinking one family that I mentioned before, I don't know whether I mentioned me or not, are the Cahillans. These are absolutely incredible, you know, in terms of Cork representation. You have Damien Connor, Damien and Connor on the Cork senior hurling team that will be in action in All Ireland final next weekend. Then you have Jack, who has represented Cork this year in the 2020 under 20. Uh, the under 20 All Ireland hurling final, and then in the under 21 Munster Championship, he has played in both court teams uh, and won and won both the double. Like uh, uh, that is incredible if you think of it like that. Then um, their sister Maeve is on both court on the ladies football team and on the uh, Camogie team, and another sister Orlet was was part of the court. Uh, on minor football team last night and she's also on the, on the uh, Cork minor Camogie team. I, I honestly don't think there's any other family in Ireland that has such, for this year at least, has such incredible representation on on, on Cork teams. Uh, I suppose, look, you couldn't let the occasion pass without talking about last Sunday's incredible All-Ireland uh, semi-final. <laughs> I know some of you were probably saying, oh my God, the narrative is being worked to perfection. You know, when Cork were, was it three points, four points ahead, I think, uh, three points ahead at one stage, and uh, coming down the whole straight, and Patrick Hawk with 65 just dropped wide, and he'd scored an incredibly game. The amount of points he got, I think he 13 or 14 scored in quite a few of them from play. Uh, some of the finest that he's ever scored, to be quite honest with you. Then that one dropped wide. Then Tim O'Mahony, who had an awesome game, as it turned out to be. An incredible hurler he probably always was, but since he got into that wide right halfback position, and uh, he had a feat of clay moment where he lost a bit of position, ball in the back of the net, and then of course Kit Kinney the sides were level, and I know there were so many people around the county, this county, were saying, "Yeah, so what did you expect? This is what Cork teams do to you, Cork Cullen team, but to come out in the second half or to come out an extra time if you like, and drive on and qualify for another Ireland final, and look." That'll be another story some other day to talk about that. But um, as far as I would be concerned, and probably a lot of people, they have reached their 2021 Everest. This was it. Get to an All Ireland and finally be capable of beating every team in Ireland. Maybe Limerick might pose a difficulty, but we were always told that this year's championship was about the silver medal position. And to call people believe that, some will, and some will be happy uh, to have got as far as that. And um, do you know what? There was there, there was a, 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 a I don't know. It's easy to bother this here as some of you will probably know, but what annoys me at times is this narrative about intercounty managers 
not about them, but the way the media portray them as being the be all and end all. Uh, you know, that is his team, um, James Horton names his team to play Dublin, Kieran Kingston this and Kieran Kingston that. He drops his son, he brings his son on at the right time. He kept players on. And like, maybe that applies to other courts, but it's certainly to the Gaelic games that I know it does not apply. There are team selections there, and, um, and when you look at the core team selection, people like Don Grady, Jar Cunningham, Diamond O'Sullivan, and there are probably more. Do you think they don't have to say as say as as uh, Kieran Kingston? I would imagine maybe some of them would have more of a say. So, any I think just lazy kind of analysis of the situation. No, maybe some do tell me otherwise. That Kieran Kingston makes every single decision. I don't, or nor do I do. Nor do I think that other and the county managers do it as well. Um, just a little concern. Um, I was watching the Sunday game. This is it. Uh, you know, sad existence. And uh, everything was going fine. Analyze it. And then I saw, then I heard mention of that the inter county season is too short. Watch this space. Because analysts that say this and pundits that say it, I better be careful here because this is a family show. By saying that, they're saying, forget about the club scenario. And in Cork, and other counties as well, where there's a dual mandate situation, any increasing of the inter-county, and look, I can understand why you would say it in one level, you know, for the promotion of the game. But this is different. She is different in so far as the clubs really, really matter. They are what it's about. And prior to COVID, it had run under control. It is one silver lining of COVID. We got to be careful that these guys are driving another agenda because increased the county season are saying, nail the clubs, take it whatever way you want. But that's basically it. Anyway, the, the coming week, and like that, that Cork, uh, that Cork team, I mean, the way uh, they have grown into our psyche, a lot of them know we recognise. Um, Rob Downey was one fella that, you know, was under a bit of pressure. I heard people saying this was going to be a bridge too far from me. Crossed the bridge in some style. Not without some challenges. Uh, Last Sunday, no doubt about that. Uh, Shamie Harnett, he was another fella that went through a bit of a lean period before he got loose. And so did Jack O'Connor. Uh, but what a guy this guy is. You know, the incredible speed he has. And this is what this car team is built on. And yeah, I've come across one or two people that don't like the style of falling, but you look, that's, that can happen. Anyway, so it has been a great week. Absolutely no doubt about that. The coming week, uh, well, nothing happening at the weekend as far as I know. Maybe one of the minor football, ladies, most of the minor football may be taking place. I can't find out. Um, but anyway, in terms of, of, of all Ireland's, Cork will play in... Four All Ireland Championships next week, including three finals. And choose that the under 20 team that delayed match will take on Galway and Torres at 7 30. Then on Saturday or Sunday, you have the minor hurlers. Uh, they play either Galway or Kilkenny. Because this year it's so different. You know, there's before runners up who go through, but because Munster straight into an All Ireland final. Uh, by the way, Galway and Kilkenny play tonight. Uh, the minor footballers, after the win last night, you know. I don't think they're going to win in all Ireland. Maybe they are. But uh, they play a semi-final next weekend against either Donegal or Tyrone. Donegal and Tyrone play on this Friday night as well. And that's going to be a big test. And then, of course, Sunday, next Sunday, as in Sunday week, at 3.30, it's the big game against Limerick. And, my God, tickets, let's... I know that you would be tempted to make a plea to somebody, open up the place and let them in. I know of, and so do you, of, of, of several uh, buses that have been organised from all over Cork going to Dublin. They have the buses booked. They are going to go to be nearly as well to let them in and they get a chance to walk up Portland Road as well and um, find out a little bit more about where, <laughs> where Kelly Harrington lives. But anyway, uh, great times, no doubt about that. And... You know, I, 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 I mentioned it somewhere during the week about this, and they said, hold on, they've nothing, you know, Cork haven't. They didn't say they'd nothing won, but, you know, maybe they, 
What happens if they lose these little islands? What happens if they lose them? It's been incredibly or so far. Um, an interesting question that bothered me was, uh, I'm very bad at records and stuff like that, scoring records from Cork County Football Championship Finals. Just take that for a moment. If there's any of you out there that have records on this, because last week I was privileged to beat a match where uh, Eve Lear had defeated Bobby, uh in the 2020 uh, June football final in Mallow. And it was a nice occasion. All oh, there were supporters there uh, from, 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 from each club. And it was lovely to see uh, the young people in particular. One abiding memory is Kiro Callahan, very involved with the club in, um, in Eve Lear. They tell me not to say in Chiquita line, but anyway. Uh, and there she was at the end, giving out sweets to the kids who were coming down off the stand. And you talk about promotion and all of that. I mean, can you imagine the memories those kids are going to have forever and a day of the day they went to Mallow and they were given sweets by some lady from the club. But anyway, uh, Chris Old Jones, he was playing full forward. His brother was playing as well. But anyway, he scored three goals and eight points. And I'm beginning to think, is that a record? for a Cork football championship match. Uh, somebody passed on information about Mark Schuber from Bannon getting three goals and three points against Steve Lehrer from Bannon in the 2015. But anyway, if any of you know that, you might, or into this, you might let us know. At the moment, he's top of the scoring uh, charts. Uh, this weekend, the, the, the only in the county game of North from Cork is the Cork ladies footballers play Mead in the All-Ireland semi-final. That game was meant to be on Saturday, but because of Kerry and Tyrone not playing on Sunday, it was moved. And the changes that have occurred in ladies' sport, the way they're controlling situations now, is incredible uh, in, in a positive light. So when you Cork, go to Crow Park on Sunday. I think there's our own half history. There's times, different times being banded about here. But anyway, they take on Mead. No, they played me in the group stage earlier on, lucky enough to meet him. I think Breed O'Sullivan's goal just before half time was vital. And Mead won the All Ireland Intermediate Championship last year. They hammered Kerry in a championship match. They are a good team. And you no, know, things, you know, are things improving for Cork? Well, certainly Orla Finn out injured. And, like, you know, she's been injured kind of for a while. So that's a worry, no doubt about it. But then, you know, you have you you have people coming like that, Dirno Sullivan, Anya Terry O'Sullivan, and Emer Scali will also be in the side. But remember from last year, Saoirse Noonan is also missing off the court team. You know, she's off playing soccer now. And in the other semi-final there, Mayo played Dublin, and that game goes on on Saturday prior to the Dublin Mayo uh, min semi-final. And the court game will follow the All Ireland Under 20 final, the novel pairing of Ross Common and Offaly. And uh, for those two counties, it would be incredible that, you know, they'll be in All-Ireland and uh, they'll have won in All-Ireland by the time it ends. So, yeah, that's that. Um, we had a crack thing with Tyrone, threatening to pull out of the All-Ireland if they didn't get more time. They got a week and it was enough in one sense because uh, I know there are issues probably after coming back. But um, I think they got enough time. I think it was fair. And it means the All-Ireland fine no. Uh, by the way, Kerry will play Tyrone next Saturday at 3.30 and the All-Ireland final goes on on Saturday instead. Well, I would, not that it's instead, but like the reason it's not going to be on on Sunday is because the ladies' football final is booked into Crow Park. And by God, they dare not change that. And so it is Dublin and Mayo this weekend. And sure, every single Dublin and Mayo game we've enjoyed them down through the years. Because you know the result before you started. That... Uh, you know, the Dubs are going to win. Uh, this time we've been taught that Dublin are slipping back and Mayo are coming forward. I'm not too sure about that, being honest with you. Killeen O'Connor is out for, for Mayo. He's a big loss. I know that Ryan O'Donnell who stepped up to take the freeze and I see now where Oshin Mullen, one of their young defenders, is, uh, is, is also one of the players missing. Um, so it's a case of, is it improving Mayo and Dublin slipping? I'm not too sure. What's the two goalies, Rob Henley? He's a new, well, he's been there for a while, but he gets his chance now. David Clapp is retired, and of course, Edmund Comerford is in for Stephen Cluxton. I don't know whether he's retired or not. 
Everyone knows as well that Brendan Maher, who'd been playing for Tipperary for 13 years and won three All Isles for them, and he was one great horror, uh, both for his county and for his club, Boris Lee. Uh, and all I ever saw him doing was playing hurling. And, um, you know, he's one of these, I suppose, uh, outstanding players because maybe he wasn't a forward. He won't get it. Like, forwards get all the, 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 the plaudits, if you like. But he was one outstanding individual and uh, a player that I'm sure Tipperary will miss. Uh, but I think his prowess as a hurling will be uh, appreciated by people all over the country. Um, moving on to uh, soccer, and for those of you who gain oxygen by the Premier League, it's back in business. You'll be delighted to know that it starts actually this Friday night where Brentford, one of the promoted teams, will take on Arsenal. And I know there's quite a number of Arsenal supporters around this neck of the woods that are not happy the way things are going at the Emirates over the past while. So they'll be over force. It's on on Friday night at 8 o'clock. Then on Saturday, like there's a whole host of games Saturday and Saturday, we're not going to be touch you or all of them. But the ones that probably most of you will be interested in being clubs of support, the Man United take on Leeds. And I know that there's huge Leeds following, as a lot of Man United players as well. That's on 12 o'clock on Saturday. And then at 5 30, another promoted team, Norwich, welcome Liverpool. And I know you want to wish Norwich all the best of you in that game on Sunday. Uh, Spurs versus Man City, and this is all about transfer. Harry Kane is leaving Spurs. Uh, he'll probably be gone by the time I finish this, or maybe he is gone. And then you, Jack Grealish, the man whose grandmother and great grandmother uh, grew up in the Sneem uh, Temple, no border. Um, he's gone to them for is it a hundred million? But in the League of Ireland Division One, this is a big, big weekend for both club clubs. They paid the derby. Uh, Cork City versus Cove Ramblers. When they met at the start of the season, Cork City won. The Cove Ramblers were the better team that night. Now, what's after happening? Since none of them have set the world on fire, uh, there's two teams in the league. Down at the bottom, you have Wexford. I think they have about five points. But in ninth position, you have Cork City on 18 points. And just above them, you have Cove on 19 points. Last weekend, I suppose if you like, maybe both of them had good results, but certainly Cork City 3 2 away to Galway and Cove drew at home with 10 men against uh, Athlone. This is going to be a defining game for them, I think, uh, because it could start to climb up the table. Um, but anyway, I'm not too sure. Uh, I, I do notice that Cork City have later signed a lot of players. And of course, then we had the big news, by the way, of Messi leaving Barcelona to join Paris Saint-Germain. And I'm not into the financial arrangements of these clubs, but by all accounts, this club Paris Saint-Germain, a bit like Man City, are owned by these wealthy petrol guys from Saudi Arabia. And they bring with them a whole background of dodgy work practices and its financial doping, I'm led to believe, at its worst, but they carry on about this guy Messi, absolutely incredible soccer player and all of that, but they carry on the winter boat him. Did he cry before he left? Would you cry if you were getting a couple of million off these buckles up the road? And the PR that went around it, you know, and tell him he's leaving, no, he's landing. Oh my God almighty. Anyway, that's that. So, uh, until the next time, and until next weekend, when we'll have that, Big, big cock story. Take care and mind yourself.